May the love of God bring us all healing and peace. Hello and welcome. Wherever you are, whenever you're finding this, we gather together to meet God. I hope this finds you safe and warm and well. In this time together, we're going to hear a reading that firstly tells us something of the people Jesus is with, then shares a story Jesus told to help us glimpse something of how God works with people. Hopefully we'll tie the story of so seeds and their sower to the people with Jesus then and to us here and now. With thanks to David for reading for us, in a moment we'll hear from Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 1 to 15. But first, let's pause, opening ourselves to God. God of love, Father and Mother and Creator, we turn to you. God with us, Jesus, we listen to your stories to learn. God of new life, Holy Spirit, breathe in us to bring healing and insight. God, we are here and we are listening. Amen. We read from Luke chapter 8, verses 1 to 15. Some time later, Jesus travelled through towns and villages, preaching the good news about the kingdom of God. The twelve disciples went with him, and so did some women who had been healed of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, who was called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had been driven out, Joanna, whose husband Chusa was a, an officer in Herod's court, and Susanna and many other women who used their own resources to help Jesus and his disciples. People kept coming to Jesus from one town after another, and when a great crowd gathered, Jesus told this parable. Once there was a man who went out to sow corn. As he scattered the seed in the field, some of it fell along the path where it was stepped on, and the birds ate it up. Some of it fell on rocky ground, and when the plants sprouted, they dried up because the soil had no moisture. Some of the seed fell among thorn bushes, which grew up with the plants and choked them. And some seeds fell in good soil. The plants grew and produced corn, a hundred grains each. And Jesus concluded, Listen then, if you have ears. His disciples asked Jesus what this parable meant, and he answered, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to the rest it comes by means of parables, so that they may look but not see, and listen but not understand. This is what the parable means. The seed is the word of God. The seeds that fell along the path stand for those who hear, but the devil comes and takes the message away from their hearts in order to keep them from believing and being saved. The seeds that fell on rocky ground stand for those who hear the message and receive it gladly, but it does not sink deep into them. They believe only for a while, but when the time of testing comes, they fall away. The seeds that fell among thorn bushes stand for those who hear, but the worries and riches and pleasures of this life crowd in and choke them, and their fruit never ripens. The seeds that fell in good soil stand for those who hear the message and retain it in a good and an obedient heart, and they persist until they bear fruit. Amen. We've just heard the story of a very reckless sower of seeds. He scatters the seeds everywhere with extravagance. Jesus says that the seed represents good news from God. God doesn't only share words of love and hope with the right people, with the right mindset, in the right places. God throws love and hope and new life everywhere, no matter what reception it will get. Jesus came and showed love and hope and new life everywhere to everyone he met, even when some of those hearing it eventually killed him. 
So this is the story of a recklessly extravagant sower of seeds. And if all we hear today is that God shares love and hope and new life extravagantly with everyone and everything, everywhere, that may be enough. But of course, the story talks about the different circumstances that affect the seeds when they land. Jesus says the story is talking about people and about the different circumstances affecting how people are able to receive God's love, hope and new life. In it, we find that Jesus understands a lot of what happens to us in life. And oh, so much happens to people. There are so many situations that make life difficult. Loss, ill health, poverty, injustice, isolation, disaster, climate change. There are crises big and small that affect us and our planet. It can take so much of our attention and energy just to survive that hope and new life gets squeezed out. Jesus knows that. There are so many cultural reasons that faith and hope can be difficult. Pressures and expectations, economics and systems, cynicism and fear. Pressures from culture and community sideline deeper, more mysterious hope and new life. Jesus knows that. Jesus knows and understands what it is to live a human life, to face terrible situations and feel society's pressures. So God knows our hearts and minds, and God still recklessly, extravagantly shares love, hope and new life into these soils anyway. And our verses today also remind us that amongst all life's difficult circumstances, God acts to make things better. God knows the damaged soil and acts to improve them. We are reminded of that in the first few verses before Jesus' story. We are told about some of the people who travelled with Jesus, sharing the good news about the kingdom of God. Some of the people who actively helped Jesus sow those seeds of love, hope and new life. The twelve disciples we know a bit. Called from fishing, invited out of tax collecting, rebels and collaborators, confused and always learning. Here we learn a wee bit about some of the women who helped and followed Jesus. We're told they'd been healed by Jesus made new, given a fresh start. Some were presumably quite wealthy, potentially entangled in the riches of this life until Jesus came along. Some were living with ill health of body and mind, then offered new life and hope. For all these women and men, Jesus has given a welcome and healing that has allowed them to become better soil able to grow in God's love and hope and new life. They don't become perfect. There are still plenty of mistakes, worries and tests. But the soil is better so they can now help share the seeds of love, hope and new life with others. And the soil is better because of Jesus. The damaged soils can be improved and Jesus acts to do that. Damaged people can be healed, and Jesus does that in word, action and welcome. Damaged communities and cultures can be transformed, and Jesus brings change through engaging beyond any barriers of gender, age, religion or anything else. The damaged soils, lives lived in difficult circumstances and pressures, The damaged soils are not just known by God. God acts to improve, to heal, to transform them. God works to give everyone everywhere a better chance to receive and grow the seeds of love, hope and new life as God extravagantly continues to throw those seeds out. So we can hope to receive those seeds and we can be hope to be healed so that those seeds can grow in us. And we can hope that those seeds do grow in us, 
so that we can help sow them and others, sharing the love, hope and new life of God even further. What kind of soil do you feel you might be just now? Are you feeling dry or flat, unsure how much life is left? God, Father, Son and Spirit, pour your living water into our hearts. Are you feeling isolated, exposed, on the edge of things? God, Father, Son and Spirit, draw us close into your community of love. Are you feeling things are messy and disrupted by change? God, Father, Son and Spirit, may we know your presence with us through everything. Are you feeling overwhelmed by damage done to a wounded earth? God, Father, Son and Spirit, help us rise together for your ways of love and justice. Are you finding life's worries and expectations too much? God, Father, Son and Spirit, may we find and follow your light. Are you hoping to be good soil, open to new life, hope and love? God, Father, Son and Spirit, feed us, heal us, welcome us, set us free, make us new. Are you seeing new life, hope and love growing in yourself, in others, in the world? God, Father, Son and Spirit, help us to see you at work and join in. God of love, hope and new life, Father, Son and Spirit, hear these and all our prayers. Amen. And now may the blessing of God's loving Father, Son with us, living Spirit, be with us and spread through us to all the world, this day, this week and always. Amen. <laughs>